This is going to be a quick tutorial on how I build my baseball card binders, but before I get started on the binder itself and what the cards look like inside, I just want to show you some materials you'll want to get in addition to the binder and the uh, binder pages. The first thing you want to get is tobacco card inserts. The second thing you want to get is penny sleeves, but not regular penny sleeves. You want to get the penny sleeves for like Pokemon cards or magic cards. So for gaming cards in general. Then you want a 3x5 index card and you want to cut those 3x5 index cards in half. Okay, so with the gaming um, penny sleeve, what you can do is when you have the miniature cards, all but the like tobacco size cards and smaller ones, you could put those miniature cards in the gaming penny sleeve. And what's nice about the gaming penny sleeve is it's a little bit smaller than a regular penny sleeve. And what that allows you to do is put the card in the binder in the penny sleeve without the penny sleeve bunching up. And it looks real good. And the advantage of having a penny sleeve for the mini cards is it prevents the mini cards from sliding around as much and that will prevent them from getting damaged. So similar to the gaming card penny sleeves, we have the tobacco card inserts. And what's really wonderful about the tobacco card inserts is etched around the perimeter of the insert is a space so that you could slide a tobacco card perfectly inside without the tobacco card or tobacco size card moving around. And then the rest of the insert is going to allow you to put it in a nine pocket page without the insert itself moving around and it presents beautifully and I'm just going to show you guys so when you put the card with the insert in the page just presents perfectly and the cards aren't going to move around they're not going to shake they're not going to get twisted or you know just just ruined in general so get those tobacco card inserts for your binders and then with those 3x5 index cards that I showed you, when you cut them in half, what they're handy for is when you've completed a page but you don't have all nine pockets accounted for with cards, you put that just half of an index card right in there and it gives it a much cleaner look and that way you're not looking at the card on the next page when you're looking at the page that you're on. So it just gives a better aesthetic appeal when you when you haven't completed a page. So now I'll get started on how I arrange the binders and go through the whole binder. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is have a theme and the theme of this binder is 500 home run club players that are have, have been retired for quite some time. And you'll notice I'll always keep my parallels next to each other. So there we go, this is Babe Ruth here. And there you can see that one card I was showing you with the uh, gaming penny sleeve, how nice it looks in there. And then you'll notice I like to keep all my horizontal and vertical cards together as well. I don't like to mix them up. And then when I arrange the cards, I try to arrange them just like how they aesthetically look nice. And sometimes I'll try to do themes like, you know, Tops brand or Upper Deck brand or you know things like that and then see notice how all the cards face in this way are all together so there we go and then of course then you go from Ruth to Mantle so sometimes you'll see a theme here like you know I got the, like, like a couple of Yankees 500 home run club Yankee guys together got all the reprints together and typically with my binders, I try to keep the cards between $15 and $25, you know, or is the max, just depending on the card. I do put vintage cards in if they're beat up. So if they're not clean vintage cards, I love using those for my binders. So you'll see a lot of vintage cards, like that's a 73 Hank Aaron, a couple of 75s. All these are vintage. They're not in great shape, but they're perfect, perfect, perfect for the binder. So there we go. You start seeing like, you know, how I do things as you as you, as I'm flipping through here. And there we go. And then this page I made up, these are like some bigger cards and again, I put like some inserts on these four pages so that um so it looks better. But it kind of this kind of rounds out Hank Aaron into Willie Mays and you'll see sometimes I'll have more than one player on a page. 
And so I try to split them up relative to how they are presented in the binder. And again, these are all parallels, no doubles. I don't keep any doubles in my binders. Don't like to have doubles. The only time I like to have doubles is if they're rookie cards, but even if I have doubles of a rookie card, I won't put them all in, in a binder. I'll just put one rookie card in the binder, and then I'll keep the rest of the rookies like in a three row. But there we go. See, like, you know, you see I have, you know, similar cards together. I try to keep it kind of like what looks aesthetically the best. So here we go with Willie Mays. And then who do you think will be after Mays? Just guess who's after Mays just based on the way I do things. I'm sure you guys will be able to figure it out. There we go with more Mays. There we go. And if you guess Willie McCovey, you were right. So just classic 50s, or, or well, not necessarily 50s, more like 1960s battery mates with the San Francisco Giants, Mays and McCovey. And then more McCoveys. You see there's a few vintage in there. Of course, those are all beat up vintage. I even have a Crease to Hell uh, jersey card. Then we got Reggie Jackson. He was a Yankee and an A along with being a California Angels at the very end of his career. Very nice there. And then we got Michael Jack Schmidt. I don't know, why, why does everybody say Michael Jack Schmidt instead of Mike Schmidt? Comment down below if you know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that. So Ray from Philly, I'm sure you know the answer to that. Comment down below for me, buddy. There we go with Schmidt. Then, oh, we got some vintage. And then Eddie motherfucking Murray. I love, love me some Eddie motherfucking Murray. And guys, I have told the story on where that term came from. Don't feel like telling it in this video, but that's what everyone calls him. Then we got Jimmy Fox. So a lot of these are like the older guys. You got um, Ted Williams. And on this binder, I don't know if I have any multiple players on, on a single page. Let's see, we got Mel Ott here. It's all Mel Ott's. And we got Killebrew. Frank Robinson. I think that'll wrap up this binder. So, oh no, one more player. Eddie Matthews. All right, guys, so that is kind of how I arrange the binders. That's kind of a, an, an example of what I do. So hopefully these tips will help you. And Alikio3, I hope you watch this because um, you prompted me to make this video by asking so many questions. And hopefully got some good tips for you. All right, guys, happy collecting.